royal, majestic, resplendent. He was a five-time NHL All-Star, Olympic gold medalist, Vesna Trophy winner, and was voted as the Rangers' most valuable player for an unprecedented nine years. He was a goalie who used every inch, every fiber of his body to make eye-popping, jaw-dropping saves. He was a goalie whose good looks was only matched by his ability to stop pucks. Standing at 6 foot 1, 187 pounds, he reigned supreme over all the land, never to be dethroned, never usurped. He's King Henrik, number 30, Henrik Lundqvist. Henrik Lundqvist was born on March 2, 1982 in the serene town of Ore, Sweden. Dad was a ski instructor and mom was a physiotherapist, and it was they who spent countless hours taking young Henrik and identical twin brother Joel to practices and games, morphing them into the NHL stars we know him as. Henrik and Joel were close, and they did everything together, playing sports such as hockey, soccer, and skiing. As Henrik recalls, his kindergarten teacher would freeze the sandpit during the winter months to create a pond, allowing the twins to skate day in, day out. And as they reached the age of eight, Henrik liked the idea of being a goalie because of how goalie pads looked. Yet, he was a very shy kid, and when their coach had asked the team if anyone would like to play in goal, Henrik hesitated, and it was Joel who raised his brother's hand to volunteer and Henrik ended up as the team goaltender, and he would never look back. From playing on Yarpins as kids, and Rogla as teenagers, they were eventually scouted by Frölunda of the Elite Serien, Sweden's top division in hockey. Henrik would make his debut for Frölunda's senior team at the age of 18, but he would bounce back and forth between the junior team as well, as he continued to hone his skills as a goaltender. As the NHL entry draft of the year 2000 approached, Henrik Lundqvist remained unknown to many scouts. He figured he'd probably get selected in the fourth or fifth round, but after brother Joel was selected in the third round, one by one, all his friends from Sweden were also called up, yet Henrik remained rooted to his seat. It is now the seventh round, and 21 goalies have been selected already. Henrik Lundqvist was still on the board, and now our story shifts over to the New York Rangers draft desk. Now by the time you get to the late rounds, every team's draft board is already all over the place, and typically, whichever scout makes the best arguments, or the most noise, gets the pick. As the Rangers scouts continue to debate on what they're going to do with their 7th round pick, assistant GM Don Maloney looked over to his head European scout, Christer Rockstrom's notebook. Throughout the whole draft, he had been crossing off names as players got chosen, but at the very top of his list was the name of a player from Sweden who remained uncrossed, Henrik Lundqvist. It turns out that Rockström had him as the top junior goalie in Europe all along, and he had been advocating for this pick since the earlier rounds, only to get shot down each time by other scouts at the table. And that's all the assistant GM needed to hear, and Henrik Lundqvist would be selected in the 7th round, 205th overall, by the New York Rangers. Lundqvist remained under the radar to the hockey world, but his turning point came in the 2001 World Juniors, where he would lead Team Sweden to a 4th place finish, announcing to the world that he had arrived. Just look at the Swedish logo. The clues had always been there that he'd later become a king. It is now the 2004-2005 season, and due to the NHL lockout at the time, NHL goaltenders flocked to Europe to play, and Lundqvist finally got to play against goaltenders with NHL pedigree. Goalies like Mika Kiprasov, who just backstopped the Calgary Flames to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, Jose Theodore, who only two years prior had won the Hearts and Vesna trophies. We're talking about established goalies like Tommy Salo, Manny Fernandez, Martin Gerber, and Marty Turco, and a 22-year-old Henrik Lundqvist would not only beat them all to capture the championship that season, but in doing so, he would also break four Swedish national records with a goals against average of 1.05, a save percentage of .962, six shutouts, and a shutout streak that would last over 172 minutes. That's almost three hockey games without letting in a goal. 
and as a result of that dominance that shook the foundations of fans and players alike, Lundqvist would be named as the best goalie, best player, and most valuable player as voted by the players. Henrik Lundqvist was more than ready for the NHL, and he would join the Rangers as the backup to Kevin Weeks the following season. Now the Rangers at the time had been long removed from their glory days and had missed the playoffs for 8 straight years already. Fans were booing the team and all hope seemed lost, and this sets the stage for Henrik Lundqvist's first official start. October 8, 2005, Kevin Weeks had already succumbed to injury in only the second game of the season and the Rangers were set to play against the New Jersey Devils a team that the Rangers had only won four times out of the last 42 games against them. Not to worry, because King Henrik was here. Like a knight in shining armor, he would lead the Rangers to a convincing 4-1 win against Martin Brodeur, one of the game's premier goalies at the time. Henrik Lundqvist had officially announced his arrival. He was good, he was real good, as his presence and goal was akin to a brick wall that blocks everything in his path. He was competitive, as when his back was against the wall, he would unleash his inner instincts which gave him the extra push to make that desperation save. When you believed you had a beat, think again. Time and time again, he looked down and out only to get a piece of the puck. But perhaps most importantly, he had an insurmountable sense of self-belief, which then had his team believing, and you'd see that in the New York Rangers during that time often fighting above their weight class with rather mediocre players. Lundqvist's calm demeanor provided the stability and consistency that made up the backbone of the team. As long as you had Henrik Lundqvist, you had a chance to win on any given night. It was only the first game, but Rangers fans could sense it. They could sense that commanding presence in their crease, and the netminder from Sweden would lead the team back to the playoffs that very first season. Even though they'd get bounced in the first round, there was no denying it. Henrik Lundqvist was a once-in-a-lifetime goalie. Henrik Lundqvist was special. His stats in his rookie year were amongst the league leaders, and he'd go on to become a finalist for the Vesna, a trophy given to the best goalie that year. It was during that first year when he was named to the Olympic team for Team Sweden, and after a couple of games in which the team started their other goalies, Lundqvist would win over the crease, and the 23-year-old would backstop his nation to their first gold medal since 1994. Over the next few years, Lundqvist would establish himself as one of the top goalies in the world, consistently shutting down the other team's superstars, earning him impressive stats as well as Vesna votes. His goals against average was always low. His save percentage was always high, both regularly in the top 10. His expected goal saved per 60 minutes was top 3 in the league year after year, meaning even though his team kept leaking scoring chances against, Lundqvist would still save way more than the average goalie. Now the Rangers were a respectable team at the time, and they'd make the playoffs and even win a series or two but they were only in those positions because of Henrik Lundqvist. Without him, the team would have floundered a long time ago, and this pattern of the team failing him would persist throughout his career. A prime example of this was in the playoffs in 2009, where Lundqvist would backstop the team to a 3-1 series lead against the Capitals, but the Rangers would only score four goals in the next three games as they'd lose all three and the series. It is now the year 2012, and Lundqvist had reached his prime, as he led the Rangers to the top of the Eastern Conference standings that season. And after years of being a finalist, this time he captured the Vesna Trophy, making him the top goalie that season. And the most shocking thing was, in a season in which we saw the Rangers win 51 games to earn an impressive 109 points to become the number one seed in the East, the team did not have a single point per game player absolutely staggering. In fact, during Lundqvist's 15 seasons in the Big Apple, he had only three teammates who scored a point per game in a given season. Yager twice, Nylander once, and Gabrick once. That is it. 15 seasons. Many of which the Rangers were a playoff team, and a couple of times as the number one team. I cannot emphasize more how much Henrik Lundqvist meant to his team. 
Lundqvist's best shot at winning the Stanley Cup occurred in the 2014 playoffs. He would lead the Rangers to a Game 7 win against the Philadelphia Flyers in the first round, but it was in the second round in which he absolutely stole the series. Down 3-1 in the series against the Pittsburgh Penguins, Lundqvist would only let in three goals in the remaining three games as he willed his team to an unlikely Game 7 triumph. The Rangers would go on to beat the Montreal Canadiens in six to send Henrik Lundqvist to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first and only time in his esteemed career. Their opponents, the LA Kings, were just on another level that year, and the Rangers would lose three games in overtime that series as they ultimately lost in five games. Heartbreakingly, this was as close Lundqvist would get to the Stanley Cup. Over the next few seasons, Lundqvist would continue to lead the Rangers, and by the year 2020, he had reached the sunset of his career. He loved New York, but he knew his time was up. He also knew there were two good up-and-coming goalies in Alexander Gorgiev and Igor Shesterkin, so he knew the team would be in good hands. He ended up making the toughest decision he's had to make in his career, to abdicate from his throne. That's what I like to tell myself anyway, but in reality, he was bought out of his contract and he'd go on to sign a one-year deal as a free agent with the Washington Capitals, although shortly after, he would have to miss the season due to an irregular heartbeat, which required open-heart surgery, ultimately pushing him to announce his retirement in 2021. Lundqvist would go down as one of the most dominant players our sport has ever seen. His 459 career wins rank him 6th all-time, with 64 of them being shutouts, which put him 10th on the all-time list. He finished with a career save percentage of .918 and a career goals against average of 2.43. And when the playoffs got tougher, his numbers were actually even better, signaling his ability to raise his game, despite his teammates' inability to do so. Not to mention, he has a 6-2 record in Game 7s, registering a mind-boggling save percentage of .961 during those games, when it mattered the most. He would have his number retired by the Rangers in 2022, and in 2023, he'd be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, signaling his status as one of the best to play the game. Henrik Lundqvist will be remembered for his sheer dominance in the crease, giving his team a chance to win every single game. He consistently performed at an elite level. Year after year, he showcased his ability to make clutch saves and steal games for his team. When I think about Henrik Lundqvist, I think of this quote from Babe Ruth, you just can't beat a person who doesn't give up. Whenever he looked like he was down and out, open net and against all odds, he'd recover and make an unbelievable save, and he kept doing it over and over and over again. He played an instrumental role in guiding his team to numerous playoff appearances, with the pinnacle being their run to the Stanley Cup Finals. Although they fell short of the ultimate prize, Lundqvist's incredible play ensured the team got closer than they ever would have without him. And even though we've seen him play his last game, Henrik Lundqvist, the king of the crease, will forever reign in the hearts of his teammates and fans alike. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and leaving a like to support the channel. Bye.